if you've got no idea what FM is, I will explain what little I know. So I was thinking how best to demonstrate FM. What I've got here that you can see is a patch editor, patch base, and it's by a company called Coffee Shopped and it's for Mac. So what I've got connected is the FB01. I am not a FM expert, as I, I said at the start, but I know just about enough to make myself dangerous. The FB01 is a half rack sound module. It's stereo and it's multi-timbral. It's four operator. The reason I've chosen it is simply because it's small and I can access this graphical editor. Let's play some sounds first. Here's a sound that I made, for example. It's just a basic donk. But I think it sounds nice. So this diagram at the top is what Eggfather is talking about, the algorithm pictures. Each of these squares is what they call an operator. And with the red lines, you can see how they're connected together. So you've got one operator, which is feeding a second operator, which is going to the output. In parallel with these two serial operators, we've got another operator feeding a second operator. And these get mixed to the output. Now you'll see there's this other red line here and that represents that this operator has feedback so it works a bit differently to the other ones. Now on the Reface DX it is four operators like the FB01 but it has a great feature in that every single operator can have feedback. And the, the feedback on every single operator is what makes the Reface DX a bit more powerful than the vintage pieces like the FB01. Although the Reface DX is also quite a lot cleaner sounding and it's got a bunch of effects. Let's listen to the sound of the FB01 and you'll hear how crunchy it can be. <laughs> You hear it's got a kind of rough noise to it. Now you may or may not like that. I do like it. But the Reface DX is a lot cleaner and I like that as well. Those are the four operators and then the way they're patched together is called an algorithm. We can view all the different ways you can connect them with this slider here. So you can have them all serial. You can have two in parallel and then the rest in serial. This arrangement here, I don't know how you describe that. And there's sort of the same one, but here the feedback is connected directly to the output operator. And on this one, it, it goes through a second stage. This is my favorite algorithm or arrangement of operators because it's the easiest to kind of understand. Here you've got one operator which is fanning out to three and then mixed. This is quite a tempting algorithm. The problem is that you can't introduce detuning so they all end up getting fed with the same signal which is a bit annoying but I sometimes do use algorithm 6. Here a similar thing, uh, this is also quite easy to understand because you've got two operators on their own and then you've just got two stacked together. And then finally this one which is really good for organ sounds. You've got no real FM happening except for the feedback path here and the, the, all the four operators are in parallel. The easiest ones to understand are the ones where you don't have a huge amount of serial operators. So anything from algorithm 5 to algorithm 8 are the easiest to understand. We'll go back to the donk. <laughs> Let's uh, dissect how this sound works. You can see these big X's which show when certain operators are on. So let's switch them all off. And then we'll activate them one by one. Let's start by enabling operator 4 and seeing how that sounds. Each of these operators generally produces a sine wave only as you can hear there. 
be quiet, but there is only one operator after all. Each operator produces a sine wave. Now, some other FM synthesizers, the operators can produce more complex waveforms. But you need to be careful with those because they can get out of control quite quickly. If you're just working with sine waves, that's sort of the purest form of FM synthesis. Let's see what operator 2 on its own will produce. It's also a sine wave, but it's, it has a very slightly different envelope. What happens when we have the sine wave coming from operator 4 and then we finally do some FM? 3 goes into 4, so let's enable 3 and get some FM going. So here we've got the sine wave being modulated by another sine wave. Now you can see the thing that's doing the modulation. So what happens when you modulate the sine wave with another sine wave is that it, you get higher frequency harmonics. So you can hear the back end of this is still a sine wave. But there is an attack phase that you now get, which is caused by this very short incoming sine wave from operator 3. Let's see what happens if we play it for the whole of the note. You can mess around here with the envelope quite easily. Kind of a sort of modem sound. If you change the level of this, it will modulate less. So, right, so if we go down to zero, it will still be the sine wave. And if we bring this up, you'll gradually start to get a bit more of those high frequency sounds. You're already starting to hear them a little bit. Definitely hear them now. They're coming in very clearly. It sounds very FM. And then at maximum you get your full modulation depth. So that's one of the ways that you can adjust the FM sound. Here we were only working with two operators, right? And it gets a lot more complicated when you've got four or six. But if you want it to be brighter, increase the level of, of your modulating signal. The next thing that we have to consider, which is the ratio. Right? Let's drop the ratio to one. So at the moment, the carrier, as it's called, the output, has a ratio of one, which is refers to frequency, right? The modulation also has a frequency of one. So at the moment, both of these operators are producing the same frequency. That's your sort of sawtooth wave. It's not quite. Uh, and it's close to a sawtooth because the ratio between the frequencies is the same. Now we can get an actual sawtooth wave, but to do that we would need the feedback. And that's why on the Reface DX you can actually set a sawtooth wave for every operator because every operator has feedback. But we can change the ratios. What will happen if we change the modulator to a ratio of two? So that means our carrier is being modulated by a signal which is twice the frequency and it sounds different. Sounds a bit like a square wave now, right? And we can get an actual square wave, again, if we use feedback. We can continue increasing the frequency of the carrier, and it will become more like a pulse wave. Each ratio kind of has its own character, but you'll find that as you go up and up, they start to sound more and more the same. And you can also modulate with a signal half of what the uh, output carrier is. And that's very FM-like. So there you go. So far, there's two ways that you can influence the tone on the output. The first one is by changing the level of your modulation signal. The more modulation, the more harmonics you get. It goes from a sine wave to some other sort of brighter wave. And the second thing you can do is mess with the ratio of frequencies. You can go from a sawtooth to a square to some kind of very thin sounding pulse. So at the moment we've used whole ratios, but you can do very fine adjustments.
Unfortunately, the FB01 only has four values for the fine adjustments. If you've got a DX7 or a reface DX, you can do this in much smaller increments, but at least it's something. And when you use these non-whole numbers, you get dissonance, like, the, like you hear now. Let's show you what you can do with the envelope. So I just had it so it was modulating the same amount throughout the whole sound, but you can change it over time, right? So here at the start now, I've got a very loud modulation which will fade out, which gives it that attack. Now it eventually fades to a sign. Let's say we wanted to add some more character to the, to the back end of that sound. We could increase the sustain portion a bit. making it the final portion a little more richer. That sounds quite good. Pretty good for just a two operator sound. Increase it a bit more, see what we can. Might be a bit too much. Get rid of the fine ratio and just. You see that fine ratio does add a bit of character on something like the DX7, you can set the fine ratio really fine and you can, it, it sounds more subtle. And Let's say we wanted to make the decay last longer. We can adjust the decay time. You can see how that's adjusting the envelope there. You really hear the FM coming out there with that slow decay and the faster you get the you can hear what that's doing to the sound uh, you can also have it so that it's doing an attack too fading into the fm like that you can use it for like a drum and bass type of sound Let's reload the donk sound and look at the other side of it. So we've done those two operators. Let's see what these two sound like on its own. There's your donk. The other part of the sound was really just an extra attack for the donk. You're mixing on the output stage operators three and four, which make that click with one and two which make the main part of the donk. So there's the main part of the donk, and then you add the extra attack. It sounds like that. What I wanted to talk about was the effect of the feedback. So I'm going to go to a different algorithm, one where this feedback operator is on its own. This one will be perfect. Let's hear how that sounds. Quite nice on its own, but it's not particularly rich. I'm going to change the envelope so that it just stay a gate. There's our FM sine wave. At the moment, as you can see, the feedback is zero. Let's bring a bit of feedback in. So this operator is now starting to modulate itself it's without any feedback pure sine wave and then when you bring it in it just starts to get a bit more raspy add a lot more and then when it's at maximum it becomes a sawtooth wave and you can over modulate it as well and it makes a noise so just before the point where it over modulates that is your sawtooth wave and if you push it too far you'll get noise out of it and that's a trick that these fm guys really like to use because there's no noise generator in in any of this they get it by really driving the feedback operator and then they get their noise like that we could use that to like make a hi-hat maybe 
Now that's quite interesting. There's still an element of tone in there and that's because it does take the feedback a while to, to circulate around. I think the best FM sounds are two operators always. That's why I like Algorithm 5 because you've got two two operator sounds in parallel. If you want a cheap and good FM synth with two operators, I can recommend you one. This is the easiest FM synth you've ever seen. PSS 480. It is a two operator FM and it's it's a home keyboard. It has got a completely modifiable two operator FM synth built in. It's got MIDI as well. The 480 is good because it's completely configurable. But before they came out with the 480, they had this really cool design with like these sliders. Can you see them? You don't have as much control with those. But you can get all your two op FM sounds and it's very um, hands on. This in the middle is your FM editor. You don't have access to all the parameters, but you do have access to the important ones. <laughs> So that's the sawtooth wave that we've generated with feedback. Now the only way to generate a really pure sawtooth wave is with feedback. But you can sort of approximate it without it. There's my square wave, right? You can hear that's a pure square wave. So the way I've done it is to have a pure sawtooth wave, which is generated with the feedback, feeding into one operator so this is operator two on its own this one it'll just be a sine wave right you look at the ratio it's two to one and that gives you the square wave now on the reface dx you can use the feedback to generate the square wave directly but on these older yamahas the only way to get a square wave is this way you can also get a pulse if you increase the ratio that's sounding really home keyboard. Let's try and do a organ type sound. The nicest algorithm for organ type sounds is with all four operators connected directly to the output. We've set up this simple sine wave. Another great thing with patch bases, I can copy this entire operator to another one. Yeah, like that. I can copy the same operator to all four of them. There's one, and then we layer it with another one. Now that's the same, so it just sounds louder. But to make a cool organ sound, what you can do is have um, each operator with a slightly different ratio. So let's do a um, one twice as high. It's already starting to sound very organy. Let's kick in the next operator, and I'm going to go down in ratio. Sounds very nice. And for the last one, what I'm going to do is use the fine ratio. Somewhere there, and I'm going to make it less loud, so it's just adding texture. Yeah, that's nice. Switch over to my keyboard. That's how you do a FM organ sound. Okay, good. This is just four sine waves all at different frequencies and levels. That's how you make a really nice organ sound. The other way of creating a patch is to choose one that's a bit like what you want to create. So let's say we want to make like a weird FM pad. This one will be esoteric. I have no idea how this algorithm, this arrangement of operator behaves. does sound really good. Let's say I really like that sound, but you know, I want to change some aspects of it. I want to make it smoother sounding, for example. I look at this and I'm like, oh, I don't really know how these operators are all connected. I can look and see, okay, well, the, the this ratio of these two is quite high and then it's going into a 
carrier, which is low, and I'm sure an FM synthesis expert would be able to tell you exactly how that sounds. I don't, I'm not an FM expert, I don't know. The thing to do is to start muting operators and just add them in one by one. So I'm going to mute these upper three operators because I'm not sure what they do. Then I'm just left with operator four, which I know will be a sine wave, and you can see how it kind of fades in and out. Operator four on its own, as expected, is one sine wave, which gradually comes in and gradually fades out. Now let's start kicking in some of the others we'll see how the sounds built up. I'm going to switch on this operator here next, operator one. Right. So at the beginning, it starts off with the sine wave. Operator four is increasing in volume a little bit faster than operator one. So operator one gradually kicks in and adds higher frequencies. And then the release phase is, is kind of similar. Now let's say we like that, but it was a bit too intense. So there's two things we can do. We can turn down the level of, of, of one a bit. That's one way. Or we could change the ratio, bring it down a bit. Make it a little bit less um, intense. So we know how that part of the sound works. Let's look at these other two operators. So I'm going to mute operator one. And I'm going to bring in operator three, which is the one next to it. There's a similar deal. This is more like a square wave now, right? Because carrier has a ratio of 0.5. This one has a ratio of one. So you get kind of, it's kind of fading into a square wave there. There's not a particularly interesting sound on its own. What happens when we kick in operator two, which is the one that feeds into operator three? Right, you can hear that as operator two kicks in, that's exciting operator three a bit more. Operator 2 is fading out a bit quicker, so it, it gets intense and then dulls away. You've always got to remember that the further up you go, the less effect it has. So let's say we want to make this sound brighter. So I'm going to increase the level of Operator 3. And we'll have it fade in a bit slower. Maybe like that. That's quite nice. Let's try it without operator two. It sounds quite similar. There's just a bit more bite there with operator two. Let's try and make operator two do more work. I'm going to increase the level. Yeah, you can hear there clearly. Probably a bit too much. So that's that leg. Now when we have all four together, we're going to combine this flow with the, the other flow. And we now sort of know how that sounds made up and we can start playing with it. Another easy thing to do always if you don't know how patch works is to change the feedback because it's quite cheap and easy. Kind of adds a, quite a high, like a very super high frequency kind of sound there. Let me mute those two operators so we just have the feedback one and the carrier. Yeah, you can hear that intense kind of sound coming. If we don't like that, we can dial it back a bit. It's a bit more pleasant. 
Let's try and play some stuff. Very good website. You literally just click it and what it does is it generates a sysx file here. Then you can load that onto your DX7, but you can also load it into your Hog Volker. DX Convert, and there's also TX Convert. Now what this is, is a free program that you can download. What it allows you to do is convert patches from one Yamaha synth into another Yamaha synth. So let's just take the file that we just generated with the DX7 uh, website. So there's the, the DX7, right? Let's say we want to convert that now into the FB01. That's done. So it's going to take that DX7 cartridge and do its best to convert it to an FB01. But there's other things you can convert to as well. DX100, Reface DX even, TX81Z. So basically you can convert from any FM synth to any other FM synth, which is amazing. It's just taken all the patches from that SysX file. you got all the names of them there and it's converted them into an FB01 compatible file. All those famous FM sounds, if you've got like a SysX file that has an FM sound in that you want, but you, you don't have that synth, then TX Convert will sort you out. Now what we want to do is to take that bank of patches and we're going to put it on the FB01. So I'm bringing it into the folder where Patchbase stores all its patches. There's the sysx file there, right? Let's go to patch banks. There's the Twitch one that I just generated. So you go into there and there's all the sounds that it generated. And we can start loading a few. There's one, I don't know how it's gonna sound, but possibly useful. Yeah, that's nice. You could definitely use that in a track. I'm, I'm quite excited by that sound. You, you can mess around here and try and make it a bit louder with some of the with some of the settings. So if we increase four, yep. Hmm, really nice. Okay, let's try the next one. Ooh. All the sounds that you generate on that DX7 cart does not exist site are extremely usable. There you've got a cool electric piano sound there. I bet it's got loads of low end. Let me try and play it on my keyboard. Let's try that one. Kind of a brass sound, very nice. That's not quite nice. That'd be a good lead sound. Kind of a weird space effect. Oh yeah, that's a really good kind of dance sound, that click. bit of delay that's a uh, guaranteed banger material some of them kind of interesting metallic sound there the metallicness is caused by these fine tunings if we turn them off it'll sound a bit more pure kind of like a pizzicato string bell there like a string sound Another clicky sound. Oh, that's very nice. As I say, it's pretty easy to get two operators working. And once you've got two operators working, then you can easily understand two lots of two operators, algorithm five, right? My favorite algorithm. But you've also got these other algorithms for the more organ type sounds. And then if you want to get wild and crazy, start muting operators, see what each does. 
and that will allow you to make adjustments. You can use this DX7 cartridge does not exist to generate your sounds. And TX Convert to convert your DX7 car into whatever other synth you've got. And you can also load SysX from other famous Yamaha synths. So here is one that I converted to the FB01. This is the Lately bass from the TX81Z. <laughs> I got SysX from the TX81Z and I went to TX Convert and boom. Thanks everyone.